In this mid-journey tutorial, I'll show you how to use the seed parameter to get more consistent results from your prompts. I'll also show you how to use the related same seed parameter to fine-tune your images once you've settled on a particular composition. And if you stick around till the very end, you'll even find out how version 4 of Midjourney's algorithm has completely changed how these features work. Hi, it's Christian Heidorn from Tokenized AI, where I show you how to navigate the exciting new world of AI software. If you see value in this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It really makes a huge difference. All of the links and everything I mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. And while you're there, make sure you smash that subscribe button. Alright, so welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to use the seed parameter as well as the same seed parameter. Now these two parameters, while they sound similar, they are fundamentally different in terms of how they work. First of all, we're going to start off with the easier one of the two or the simpler one of the two, which is the seed parameter. I'm going to start off by, first of all, showing you what happens when you use the seed parameter. Um, it's important to understand that the behavior of this parameter is different in version 3 and version 4. I'm going to start off with, ver with version 4 mainly because I believe most of you guys are already using version 4 most of the time. But I will also show you how it behaves in version 3 afterwards because it is quite crucial. It is slightly different. So first of all, what you need to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm set up for version 4 and then I'm going to start off with my very first com prompt and that is going to be ski lodge in the Alps and I'm going to add a actually I'm going to run it without a seed first so you can see what happens if I don't use the seed parameter all right so let's see what happens Okay, so as you can see, what it's done is it has done exactly what we expected it to do. It has generated four hyper-realistic images of a ski lodge in the Alps. Now, I'm going to run the exact same prompt one more time. Ski lodge in the Alps. And again, without any additional parameters, just to show you that it's going to yield different results, even though I'm using the exact same prompt. So let's wait. Okay, so even though we can clearly see that the overall style and what it's given us is essentially the same concept, what we can already see is that the images are fundamentally different. So I'm just going to show you this um, side by side, or not side by side, but I'm going to switch between the two. So you can see that even though we use the exact same prompt, the images are very different, right? So there's variation. Um, we can only assume that somehow within the algorithm it uses a random number or random seed value to generate very different results. Now, what we're going to do though, the whole point of using the seed parameter is because you do not want these completely random results. So let me show you what happens if we say ski lodge in the Alps again, and this time we are going to set a seed. Now, you enter the seed parameter just like this, but then it needs to be followed by a numeric value. This numeric value can be an integer, which is basically just a whole number, um, any positive value, usually anything that's between one and five digits is fine. Um, technically, you could probably go even higher. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to use um, 8888. I don't know, just, just guessing this number. And let's see what happens. Okay, so what we got here now, this in and of itself is not surprising. It's still the same concept, this is still the same style. It is a slightly different image than the others. This is not surprising. But what happens if I enter the exact same prompt one more time, just like I did before, but this time I'm going to use the exact same seed value again, 8888. If I use a different seed value, I would get a different result. But in this case, I'm going to use the exact same one. And let's look at what happens. 
Okay, and here's the next one. Notice something? They look exactly the same. And just to make a proof of point, I'm going to open up these two images one more time. And I'm going to switch between the two of them. They are exactly the same. And that is the point behind the seed parameters. So the idea is that every time you run a prompt with the imagine command, Midjourney tends to just generate something random. It feels random to you and you keep getting all these different variations, but that's mainly because once it passes all that information to the algorithm, it uses a random value, a random seed at the beginning, which they are sometimes also call noise to introduce that randomness into the whole calculation. And that's why you're getting all these different variations, which are very creative, very different, of varying degrees of detail and different compositions. The seed parameter allows you to fix that. And you can literally just fix it to a very specific setting. Now, if I were to change just a tiny detail about this prompt, for example, if I added a typo, a spelling error or something like that, and I use the same seed, the image will look very different though, because we've changed something about the prompt. So it's important to understand how sensitive this is when you're using the seed parameter. You need to be careful about typos. Now, one thing that's new about version four is that the behavior here is slightly different. In this case, using the same seed value literally yields the exact same image. In version three, that was not the case. In version three, it's slightly different. In version three, what would happen is that the overall composition would be very, very similar to each other, but you would not get the exact same image. And I think, I actually think I want to show this to you just because it's important to see how the behavior is different between the two different algorithms. So let me quickly switch back to version three. And we're going to do this with a different prompt now because I'm a bit tired of looking at ski lodges. But what we're going to do is I'm going to enter the imagine. I'm going to use erupting volcano. And I'm going to use a seed. I don't know. One, two, three, four, five. And let's see what happens. All right. So at this stage, there's nothing particularly special yet. We've got an image or four images of an erupting volcano. And as we can clearly see, we're using version three of the algorithm, which is quite artistic. And we all loved this version already before, but compared to version four, it's obviously not as detailed, not as hyper-realistic, but that's not the point here. So my point is what we're going to do now is we're going to do, we're going to enter the exact same command, just like we did before with the ski lodge, but let me just make sure that I don't have any typos erupting volcano. But this time, even though I use the exact same seed value, I'm going to get a slightly different set of images. Have a look. Okay, so let me just quickly open up these two sets of images. And let's have a look. So what you can see is that the images are slightly different. However, they do have a common directional sort of composition. So particularly the one on the top left, you can clearly see that it's using the same seed value. The one on the top right as well. The one on the top, sorry, in the bottom right is already quite different. I'm not exactly sure what happened there because that deviation is quite unusual for, uh, you know, for, for a situation where we're using the same seed. And the one on the left has a very similar composition, particularly with the clouds in the background, but it is still distinctly different. Now, this is the exact thing I was trying to refer to when I said that in version three, using the same seed value does not necessarily yield the exact identical image. In version four, you'll literally get the exact same image down to like the minute, tiny little details. I'm not sure whether that's intentional or whether that will change in the future. It's entirely possible that in the future, the behavior of version four will be different and because 
as we're as we're talking right now, it's still in an experimental phase. But um, just be aware that while you're using it right now, you need to understand how you know the the different behaviors work. Um, there's another seed parameter which is not called seed, but same seed. Same seed has an entirely different objective. The point with same seed is to literally get four images that are extremely close together um, in the sense that it'll basically yield four images of almost the identical composition with just tiny, tiny differences. So using same seed is quite useful when you just want to see whether you can fine tune your image to something very specific. You know, if you just want to nudge little tiny details. Um, I think it's best if I show you how this looks. Let me just quickly give it a try. We're going to use a different prompt this time. Aztec temple in the jungle. And I'm going to use same seed. And this, again, you need to add a value at the end. And this time I'm going to use, I don't know, 2022. And let's have a look for the first. Actually, no, we're just going to do one um, command this time. And there you go. Here we have our images of an Aztec temple in the middle of the jungle. And I think you can already see, clearly see the difference between using the same sorry, using the seed parameter in the previous examples and using the same seed parameter in this particular case. So here you can clearly see that we have the same composition. We sort of have this half moon shaped jungle at the bottom of each single image. And in the middle, we have a different type of temple in every single one of the variations. Now, this is what I meant with slight variations. So this is this is really, really useful if you think you've already got a particular composition roughly in the area where you would like it to be. And you just want to see whether you can get some some tiny details like, you know, you know just a little bit of oomph um, that that will give you something completely different that you want to have. Um, the behavior here is specific to version three because same the same seed parameter currently does not support version four of the algorithm as of December 2022. Again, this might change in the future. If you want to use same seed for now, you need, you need to stick to version three. Um, but again, this might change in the future. I'm going to do actually one more example just to illustrate. I'm going to use the volcano one erupting volcano same seed and again this time i don't know i might as well just use the same one it doesn't really matter because um it's a different parameter that i'm using here so let's have a look oops messed that one up erupting volcano same seed one two three four five and let's have a look okay so notice something so if you look at these three very vari four variations they look very similar to the first image from up here where we used this seed one two three four five so it does seem that there is a connection um, between using the same seed value for the seed parameter or the same seed parameter and in this case, it took the first one here in the top left, and it's given us four variations, which are just slightly, slightly different. And again, in the end, you can pick which one you like the best, and you can continue to work off of that one. Um, so this was just to show you how how the behavior is literally the same, depending on, you know, no matter what sort of prompt you use. Um, and yeah, that's, that's how the same, that's how the seed parameter and the, how the same seed parameter work. Um, I just want to show you one last thing, because you might want to use one of your old jobs, one of the old images that you've generated um, that you still have in Discord and work off of, the, off of that. And you might not know what seed was used to create that image. In order to retrieve that seed, you actually need to do um, something that uses the emoji or the add reaction button. Before we do that, 
This only works if you've actually enabled direct messages for the server that you're currently working on. So if this is, it doesn't matter whether it's in the official Midjourney Discord or whether it's your private Discord server, make sure that you right click on the server that you're in and then you go to privacy settings and then make sure that here at the top, direct messages is activated. If this is deactivated, you need to activate it. If it's not activated, then what I'm about to show you will not work. So let me just go find an old image that I generated. And let's say I wanted to work off of this image here, right? And I wanted to use exactly sort of the same seed value that was used for this one. I would have to retrieve it. But how do I retrieve the job? Well, what I do is I go over here to the right. Let me just move this out of the way. I click on the add reaction button. And then what you need to do is you need to select the envelope emoji. And there's only one, there's multiple envelopes, but there's only one official one. And basically the shorthand is colon envelope colon. All right, let me see, as you can see down here, you click on that. And what then happens is up here, the Majorney bot will send you a direct message. If I open this now, what you'll see is we get all of the information regarding this particular job. We get every single one of the variations as a separate image. We get the job ID and we get the prompt. And guess what? We also get the seed value. So if you wanted to use this prompt and stick with the same seed, so you get the same type of composition, you could do that and just copy this value. And then next time you enter it as a command, that's the value that you add at the end for the parameter. So that's how you retrieve a job and get your seed value. All right. So that's it for the seed parameter in mid journey. What you've learned today is how to use the seed parameter, how to use the same seed parameter, how they all differ between versions three and versions four of mid journey. And you also learned how to retrieve a job ID, including the seed that was used for that job in order to work off of one of your older archived images. I hope you found this very useful and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the full length of this video. If you found it useful and enjoyed it, it would mean the world to me if you hit the like button. And if you would like to get notified the next time I release a new video, make sure you smash that subscribe button right under the screen. I'll see you next time and take care.